All right. Welcome, everybody, to today's Ohio Family Network RFP webinar number two. Uh, my name is Steve Beha. I am the uh, Outreach and Education Coordinator for Families for the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities. Uh, thank you all for taking the time today to join me for, for the webinar. Um, as I said earlier, I hope to uh, be able to answer all your questions or as many questions as I can at this point in time. Uh, please pay attention to the dates that are in the webinar and in the RFP. Um, there are some pretty specific dates and uh, email addresses to send questions to to receive information. Um, so I just want to make sure you are paying attention to those specifically. Um, this webinar will essentially cover the RFP. Uh, I'm going to be reading a lot from what the RFP says directly in it. Um, it's not all inclusive. There are some things in the RFP, some legalese and things like that, that I'm not going to cover in the webinar. Uh, but essentially, this is a way for you to hear uh, what's in the RFP and to ask any uh, questions that you might have about uh, the process itself. Um, so with that, I am going to go ahead and get started. So we'll start off right off the bat with some important information. Um, all questions and proposals need to be sent uh, to the email address that you see on your screen. Uh, for folks joining on the phone, that email address is dodd.grant.applications at dodd.ohio.gov. So all questions and all proposals need to be sent to that email address. Uh, anything sent anywhere else won't get answered and will not be, uh, be uh, put into consideration for the grant. So make sure you are sending everything to that email address. The um, grant proposals are due no later then 12 p.m. on November 25th of this year, 2019. So the purpose of, of this uh, grant process is that we're seeking proposals from eligible applicants to facilitate the development of Ohio Family Network services, which will be led by people with intellectual and or developmental disabilities, as well as their families and siblings, and will be supported through collaborations with community partners. Family networks help expand access to information and training, will foster connections to other people with developmental disabilities as well as their families and siblings, and will increase community engagement and capacity. The goal of the project is to leverage the knowledge, diversity, and strengths of people with developmental disabilities as well as their families and siblings along with public and private resources. Uh, and this will establish an Ohio family network of services that will be deeply integrated within the neighborhoods and local communities. Through this project, DODD expects that people with developmental disabilities as well as their families and siblings will feel more confident and hold a more optimistic vision for their future will experience connections with other people with developmental disabilities as well as other families and other siblings, and will demonstrate a greater understanding and support for self-advocacy and self-determination, as well as have greater access and engagement with their local community. We also expect that local community partners will report an increased desire and ability to welcome and support people with developmental disabilities as well as their families and siblings. So successful applicants uh, will become members of the OFN or Ohio Family Network and will be required to support the vision and shared commitments. Uh, the following are those, those commitments and the, the vision. So disability is one of many types of human diversity that families with high expectations for their children raise adults with high expectations that all people with developmental disabilities as well as their families and siblings have strengths and valuable experiences, that peer support is sustainable, it empowers families and changes lives, that empowered people with developmental disabilities as well as families and siblings strengthen their communities, 
and the role of service systems is to complement the support that already exists within the community. So our hope is that in order to support families and communities in this way, that the family network will leverage asset-based community development principles, and those principles emphasize typical life experiences, public and private resources, non-paid supports, and moving from a sense of dependence to one of empowerment. So those ABCD principles help families and communities increase local capacity to meet the needs of community members while amplifying the strengths that already exist locally. And as outlined in the Charting the Life course framework, that includes three buckets of support, which is one to provide information and increase skills. The second is to develop relationships. And the third is to increase access to goods and services. So actually, I want to pause right there. So that's that's kind of the purpose and a little bit of background on uh, why we think this project is important. I'm going to unmute the line, and if folks have any questions, feel free to ask them um, or type them into the instant message box, and I will get to them on there. Okay, I don't see any questions. So I'm going to put everybody back on mute and we will progress on through. So the minimum qualifications uh, to um, submit an application is it must be an organization whose mission or work performed within the organization is consistent with the purpose of this RFP. The organization's board of directors or responsible parties must include a person with developmental disabilities or a parent, grandparent, or sibling of a person with developmental disabilities. The proposed leadership of the project must include a person with a developmental disability or a parent, grandparent, or sibling of a person with a developmental disability must be willing to provide support to families across multiple lifespans from early intervention through aging, and must be able to su provide support to families in multiple counties, at least three in Ohio. The grantee will provide the following in each of the counties listed in their proposal. They will develop greater capacity locally for some for people with developmental disabilities as well as their families, siblings, and communities utilizing the Charting the Life course framework to meet their needs for discovery and navigation, relationship and networking, as well as goods and services. The grantee will expand access to non-disability related community resources and collaborate with governmental, nonprofit, and for-profit organizations in the community. The grantee will provide targeted outreach to people with developmental disabilities as well as their families and siblings who are low income, non-English speaking, or minorities, including those living in the rural areas of the geographic region um, that you submit. The grantee will use each of the following resources as strategies for supporting people with developmental disabilities as well as their families and siblings in, as in-person sessions. Charting the life course framework, growing family resilience, and families at the center of a connected community. All three of those resources um, are resources that, that are being provided by the department, by DODD. Um, and they will be required uh, in-person sessions for uh, within the networks. The grantee will attend quarterly Ohio Family Network meetings with DODD and other grantees. Um, those locations and dates will be determined. A representative will attend quarterly those quarterly OFN meetings. We will use the templates and data collection systems agreed to by DODD and the grantee to meet the rep reporting requirements. 
and those templates will be used to make those quarterly reports that will reflect <clears throat> the completed and proposed activities to support families in each county that the network is serving. And we also have monthly calls or meetings in addition to the quarterly meetings uh, for any type of technical assistance. Any activities or opportunities provided for people with developmental disabilities as well as their families and siblings as a part of this RFP will be designated as a project of the Ohio Family Network and that will be in partnership with um, the proposer and DODD. So any of those in-person family sessions or anything that is a part of the Family Network services uh, should be designated as Ohio Family Network um, and then obviously you can use uh, in partnership with whoever is submitting the application. I think that's another good place to pause. Um, so I am going to unmute and uh, check out the instant message box. If you have any questions, now is the time. I have a question from the Ability Center. Yeah. Um, our question pertains um, to this, having someone with a disability um, as part of yeah, that line. Um, proposed leadership of the project must include a person with a DD or a parent, grandparent, or sibling yeah. of a person with DD. Um, uh, how strict is that? Could it be a, uh, could the person be uh, like a, a sibling in law or could it be um, someone that had a sibling with DD that is no longer with us? That both of those scenarios are fine. Uh, I, the important part is, is that somebody have um, a direct relationship uh, family wise with somebody with a disability. Uh, so I think both of those scenarios are, are acceptable. Okay, thank you. Uh huh. Okay, don't see any other questions, so we're going to move right along. So this grant is funded with state dollars, um, and the amount of funding, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we expect to award grants not to exceed a total of 300000 in fiscal year 20 and 300000 in fiscal year 21. Uh, so as we uh, receive proposals and begin scoring them, the highest scoring proposals will be funded until the total available funding for the project is awarded, uh, meaning that um, we hope to have multiple different types of proposals with um, different ideas and different counties served. Obviously, those budgets will all look differently, um, and then we will hopefully be able to fund up to a, a maximum total of 300,000 of all the projects. So that's not 300,000 per project, but 300,000 uh, of all the combined projects that, that we'll be able to fund in both fiscal year 20 and fiscal year 21. Project period runs from January 1st of 2020 through June 30th of 2021. And the grants will be funded on a reimbursement basis for deliverables and activities completed. The grant agreement between DODD and the grantee will further specify the timelines for completion of each activity, deliverable, and payment structure. And here's uh, the various deadlines for everything. Um, so we've already had webinar call number one, uh, which is pretty uh, mirrors this call as well, but a recording of that is currently up on the, the grants opportunity page of our website if you want to go back and listen to that one. This is webinar call number two. Uh, this also is being recorded and will be posted um, on the, the grants opportunity page of the website. Um, any written questions that you have are due by tomorrow. Um, that will give us time to respond to those questions and have those questions posted by October 28th, 
which hopefully gives you enough time with both the webinars and the responses to questions will give you enough information uh, and enough time between October 28th and November 25th uh, to get the proposals in. We hope to have notification of the awards uh, in the middle of December, December 16th, and then starting the work January 1 of 2020. Um, so I'm going to pause here once again, uh, went over a little bit of the, the funding and some of these deadlines. So if anybody has any questions about those, uh, I just unmuted everybody. Feel free to, to ask away. So Carol asks, is it possible for one organization to apply for the whole grant and facilitate learning statewide? Um, I think it would be possible for that to happen, but you would have to show how you would, if you're actually doing it statewide, how you would be touching all 88 counties. Um, and so I think that is, that is an option. Um, and it'd be interesting to see how um, what kind of plan would be put in place to, to hit all 88 counties, but I, I think it's definitely possible to apply for it. Is it preferred, Carol has a second question, is it preferred that multiple nonprofits receive grant dollars in the different regions? Um, so I'll get to the scoring here in a little bit. Um, there isn't anything that um, I think would show that preference. Um, however, within the, the scoring phase, there is um, questions around how well do you know uh, the counties in which you want to provide these family network services and that it will go into consideration for the scoring. Um, so I think um, folks that have a good understanding of their geographic regions or the counties that they intend to provide the Ohio Family Network services within um, would score higher on that one. But again, um, I think it's whatever each organization or each applicant um, feels they can provide the best services at, uh, they should include those in their list of counties that they would like to provide these services in. All right, let's move along. So again, uh, written questions should be emailed to dodd.grant.applications at dodd.ohio.gov. Subject line of the email for the question should contain the applicant's organization name and Ohio Family Network State Fiscal Year 20 Q&A. Um, so all questions must be submitted by 12 p.m. tomorrow, all written questions, um, and we will post the responses to those questions um, by 5 p.m. on October 28th. And you see there um, the grant opportunities page of DODD's website. Uh, for folks on the phone, the best way to navigate to that website would be go to dodd.ohio.gov, click on the About Us tab at the top of the page, and then on the left-hand side, there'll be a Grants uh, link that you can click on that will take you to that page. Again, can't stress enough, please make sure when you are submitting your applications, uh, your proposals, that you send it to that email address, um, and it must be received no later than 12 o'clock p.m. on November 25th of 2019. Uh, we will not score any proposals received after that time.
So all the proposals will be selected using a competitive process. Uh, we'll not consider grant proposals that do not include all of the required documents identified in the RFP. All required documents must clearly be labeled by the applicant or they may not be considered. DODD shall not consider proposals received after the submission deadline or for any other requirement identified in the RFP that is not met. Proposals eligible for review shall be scored in accordance with the procedure set forth in the RFP, and all proposals will be reviewed and scored by a proposal review committee, which shall include at least two representatives from DODD. So this is all uh, outlined in the RFP as well, um, but some of the items that must be submitted would be the responses to the required questions, uh, the completed grant application form, a budget and budget justification summary, and statement of support and acceptance uh, by the head of the organization. Letters of support are required from at least two non-disability specific community partners and at least two families currently utilizing services from the organization. Letters of support will not be accepted from people who are employed by the applicant or who are a member of the organization's board of directors or responsible parties. And we must also have a list of counties, three minimum, in which the organization will establish a family network as described in the RFP. Proposals will be awarded up to 100 points during the scoring process. The budget and budget justification summary accounts for 10 of those points, and then the required questions uh, accounts for 90 of those points. So you will see the specific questions outlined in the RFP that we'll be looking for answers to, um, but this is the scoring breakdown by topic. So your the organization, the applicant organization uh, structure and, and those type of things would be 20 points of the scoring. Um, the actual services provided in the family network and how the organization intends to carry that out would be 40 points. Um, any community partners and how um, the engagement of the community, uh, how the network will be engaging with the community would be 20 points. And then, uh, as I stated earlier, the geographic area that you intend to serve uh, will be 10 points of the scoring. Again, the question details are listed in the RFP. I'm going to go back to here, pause for questions again. I'm going to unmute folks now. And I see Joe has entered a question. She asks, can you say more about the three strategies that the grantee must offer? Can families choose among these strategies, choosing ones that fit for them? Absolutely. The, the requirement is the, the three strategies. Again, the, the charting the life course, growing family resilience, and families at the center of a connected community are going to be the three resources that are available. The family network must offer um, those three resources to families, but there's no requirements that families must, achieve, must choose those, or if they sign up for one, they must uh, attend the other two. Uh, we just hope that those three will be made available to the families within the network. Joe asked the second question, does the grantee build in compensation to the entities offering these strategies? Um, the only thing you would need to build into your proposal for that would be, um, you know, if there's any type of facility fee, uh, if you're planning to offer any type of refreshments, anything um, around the hosting of the strategies um, or hosting of those resources. Normally they're um, like one day um, informational sessions. And so whatever would go into you hosting that. Uh, but again, the, the three resources are being provided by the department, and so the resource themselves are being paid for um, by contracts with the department. The grantee would only need to um, provide the, you know, like I said, the hosting, whether that be at a library or if there's a facility that you're hosting it at, 
uh, refreshment, anything that would go into the actual hosting of those resources. Hopefully that makes sense. And I'm pausing because I see Joe's typing again. So wait and see what question she has next. And Joe says, so the grantee can determine how many sessions to offer. Yeah, there, there are, um, so they do have to offer the three. So at least one charting the life course, at least one growing family resilience, and at least one of the um, families in the center of a connected community. So a total of three, um, but one of each should be offered. Um, they can be offered in different counties. So if you have uh, county A, B, and C, you could offer one of them in county A, one of them in county B, and one of them in county C if you would like. Um, we really are relying on um, the applicants, uh, you all, the proposals to say um, where and when these make sense for the families in your areas. Uh, we really don't want to say you have to provide um, this resource at this time at this place. We, we really are uh, relying on you all to know your communities, to know your families that you're networked with, and know um, when and where is the best time to provide these. Um, again, we feel like these are very good resources and these aren't the only resources. If there are other resources that you know of that you wanna build into your proposal, by all means, uh, you are welcome to do that as well. But at least these three um, that we are providing, um, we feel like are, are a good foundational um, resources for families to have and not just families of folks with disabilities where um, you know our hope is that these sessions are open to anybody um, and so we feel charting the life course is a great framework uh, no matter if you have a child with or without a disability um, same with growing family resilience are tools and strategies that can be be used um, within and and outside of the disability community and the same as families uh, in the center of a connected community. So uh, hopefully these are not just disability specific sessions and, and open to everybody. Any other questions at this point? Okay, just a couple more slides to go. Um, and these are basically just um, reminder slides, the last two. Uh, so again, here are on, on your screen are the various deadlines. Um, important ones are obviously written questions are due tomorrow. And then proposals are due on November 25th. Both of those are at noon. So questions due tomorrow, October 22nd at noon. Proposals due November 25th at noon. I know I've been saying it a lot, but it's really important that all questions and proposals get sent to the dodd.grant.applications at dodd.ohio.gov email address. Um, that is the only email address that we will receive these from and respond from. So hopefully, hopefully I've said it enough that that is crystal clear. So for the last time, I am going to pause for any questions that anybody might have. And if there are none, thank you all so much for taking the time out of your day uh, to learn a little bit more about the RFP. This video will be posted on the DODD website uh, under the Oper Grant Opportunities page uh, if you need to go back and review it um, and get those questions in by tomorrow. Looking forward to reading all your proposals. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day.